Amanda here at Bare Bones Living. Welcome back. And I've got some produce here today. And this morning, I was feeling very discouraged. Uh, a couple of days ago, I harvested these carrots, which are absolutely delicious. And we have eaten most of them just as snacks. My boys love them. And then the rest of them, I wasn't sure what to do with. And I didn't really have the time to deal with it because these days, everything is changing in our house and something always comes up and something always needs attention. Yeah. And I just can't get anything really accomplished. And in the video of me and the boys harvesting these carrots, I noticed that my celery was doing poorly again and it's kind of uh, ebbed and flowed in how it has done. And every time I've noticed that the leaves have died back, started to die back, I kept thinking to myself, I should just go out and clip those and harvest them and get something and not let them die. And then in the craziness of moving, a lot has has died. So when I was harvesting these carrots, I saw that it was happening again, and I made note of it in that saying, man, I really got to go out and get that celery. And so yesterday I finally did, and I went and chopped down a bunch of the outer, larger stalks of celery. And some of them had started to die back already, but I figured this A gives the chance gives the plant a chance to grow more, grow bigger, grow healthier, get rid of whatever it's, you know, trying to get rid of and and grow some more stalks. And B, it's better that I'd rather have maybe smaller stalks that I'm actually going to get something out of and use. I can use this for I can use the leaves. I can use the stalks for seasonings for seasoning broths and things like that. And some of these are pretty good, you know, a pretty good size stock. Um, so I went out and I trimmed every plant, the outside stalks. I trimmed about two thirds of the plant, half to two thirds of each plant. And now I have, and then I washed them, ripped off the leaves and I got a big cluster of celery here. Now, not all of this is going to be usable. I'm still gonna have to trim it up, chop it up, things like that. But I'm at least gonna get something out of the celery. And that's one thing that I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about today is giving yourself some grace. Um, I'm discouraged because I've, I've seen my celery go through these phases of it's doing great, it's luscious, it's green, you know, they look awesome. And then I'll look at them again and they, they look poor or they look anemic or, you know, things are dying and things like that. And I know that I should be doing other things to help them to harvest them, to attend to them, and I just don't have the time or the energy to do everything. You can't do everything. I'm not superwoman. I got little boys. I'm getting my son used to going to school. We're in a new place. We're looking for a house. All these things are discouraging. All these things are time consuming and one person can only do so much, right? So I'm trying to give myself some grace. And then I woke up this morning, and so I harvested this celery yesterday. And I left it on my uh, kitchen island here overnight because I, I had the time to harvest it, but I didn't have the time to preserve it at that moment. And this morning, I was discouraged again because a lot had wilted and died and it, it doesn't look great right now basically and when I came out this morning and I saw how 
poorly my celery had looked, I was discouraged again. Um, but instead of throwing myself a pity party, I decided I had this bowl of carrots that I still, again, I harvested and did not deal with right away because I didn't have the time or the energy. I had a bunch of dirty carrots. I had a bunch of wilted, dirty celery. You know, and I, I, was, I was feeling down on myself. I was feeling discouraged. So instead of throwing myself a pity party, I decided while the baby was sleeping, I'll, I'll clean my carrots, I'll clean my celery, see what I got, see what I can use, and what can I use with all this? Well, I just harvested a bunch of potatoes not too long ago either, and what has, you know, carrots and celery and potatoes that we love? Chicken pot pie. Uh, my family absolutely loves chicken pot pie. And so I'm going to turn this around, make something good about it, make something good come of it, make a delicious dinner, make a couple extra to freeze and put in the freezer because that's always awesome. Um, and, and actually use what I am growing. Um, so our chicken will be store-bought, but everything else, you know, I, I will have grown and it'll be delicious. So let me show you kind of what we're working with here. So I cleaned up all my carrots, like I said. Most of the big ones we've already eaten. Um, we have a lot of little carrots, and that's why I think that this chicken pot pie is going to be perfect for these, because what are you gonna do with all these itty bitty carrots, right? Might as well dice them up. And if you guys are not growing your own carrots, I did not strongly pursue growing carrots at all before, and I've never really gotten much out of carrots, but I gave it a shot this year. I still didn't get a ton, but you guys, these are the sweetest carrots I've ever eaten. I'm so excited about them. They taste so good. Everyone that eats them thinks that they are the sweetest, most delicious thing. My boys, I caught my boys multiple times out in the backyard pulling these out and just eating them, which totally warmed my heart um, because they think it's sweet like candy and it's a snack and it's easily accessible for them. So I'm so excited about growing more carrots and I already planted more. So this is what we got for our carrots. I'm gonna dice these up. I just washed them, got all of, like the little roots off of them. Uh, and that's, I'm just gonna dice them up. And then here I have lots and lots of stalks of celery. And you know, some of them are a little lighter than others, um, thicker, thinner, things like that. I'm just gonna dice these up. The things that I don't wanna eat, like kind of this part, I don't, it's gonna be a chewier. So I think that one I'll probably just chop this part off. And this I'm going to, I'm gonna get another bowl and I'm gonna have a soup bowl because there's nothing wrong with this piece of celery. It still smells just like celery. It still tastes just like celery. I'm gonna make broth out of these bits. I do have, you know, a discard here that I'm gonna give to my chickens. This has the leaves that weren't good and the roots and tips of the carrots that weren't good. None of this is gonna to go to waste. So this is my chicken uh, bowl. I'm gonna get a soup bowl that things like this that I don't necessarily wanna chew on, but still wanna get use out of it and flavor and nutrients out of it. And then the rest of them I'm going to just dice up. So what I came up with was about, this is all the carrots that I grew and chopped up and this is about two and a 
quarter or two and a half cups of carrots. These are all the celery that I chopped up and they're about it's about the same, two and a half to two and a quarter, or two and a quarter to two and a half. Um, I have one onion diced up, and then these are the potatoes that you guys saw me harvest with my boys, and I just diced up. These are some of the smaller uh, potatoes. Work, you know. I was concerned as to what I was going to use them for. Um, the really, really small ones, like the little marbles, I used actually in a venison stew that I wish I had recorded me making because it was so delicious. Um, but I used those little marble potatoes in that and it was perfect for the stew. And then these are like the next biggest size and so it was perfect for dicing up for this. There's still some more that were this size, and then there are some more that are just a little bit bigger. But this got rid of a good chunk of the potatoes that I had harvested that I wasn't really sure. You know, they're not big enough really to like make a baked potato or anything, or like a oven roasted potato. I guess I could still oven roast them, but they weren't really substantial. I couldn't make them as a baked potato. Um, so, I'm happy I used that up. This is what I have. This is uh, the bowl that I'm going to be freezing, adding to my freezer bag for when I make my broth. Uh, all these ends of these carrots, some of the chewy rubbery carrots, and then celery that I didn't think we were going to enjoy the texture of and or the taste of uh, a little too wiry or whatever so I'll just freeze these for when I make my broth I did pull out a freezer bag of diced carrots that I got from Azure because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, double this recipe um, so the recipe that I go off of, I just doubled um, to have lots of extra freezer meals. And I didn't think I was going to have enough in here, so I went and grabbed a, a few extra just to bulk it up. And then I did not add anything to the chicken bucket, so I'll just give these to the girls tomorrow. Alright, so I just cooked up all of our chicken. And to that same pot that has all of our good chicken bits in it, I'm going to add, I don't know, maybe like six tablespoons of butter. I'll probably need more because I'm doubling this recipe, but that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to melt that and I'm going to add all of my veggies. Alright, so I'm going to add all those carrots plus a little extra. All these potatoes and onions. And then for the celery, I'm not going to add all of this celery. I'm going to freeze some of it too. Um, I'm going to only add half of this celery. So that's about a cup and a half of celery. And my garlic. And this is my homegrown garlic. I just picked out some really small ones, so I think I have eight really small cloves of garlic here that I just minced up. So I'm just going to cook this just until it is tender, and I'm going to add six tablespoons of flour to this mixture. 
which I need to count otherwise yeah. I'm going to totally mess it up. And then I'm just going to stir it all up. Get everything coated with flour. And then I'm going to be adding my homemade chicken broth. I'm going to add six cups of chicken broth. All right, so now I'm going to add six cups of chicken broth into here. bring it to a boil. All right, so this came to a boil and has cooked for a couple minutes and thickened up nicely. So now I'm going to add my peas. And I'm gonna go for about two cups. And I'm also going to add a cup of cream. A couple tablespoons of parsley. A teaspoons of salt and maybe a teaspoon of pepper as well as my chicken that is already cooked up I just gotta add it in just lightly cooked it, seasoned it, and then I have just had it in a paper towel collecting some of the grease. Let's stir that up and see what it looks like. And this is going to make quite a few chicken pot pies. Every time I do this recipe, I make usually one, uh, just one recipe, and it says it makes two pies, and it usually makes four pies for me. Um, I don't know if I just have really shallow pie tins. I've used disposable, like the foil pie tins. I've used glass pie tins. And every time I've turned out more than two pies. But it never goes to waste because I can just put it into, even if I don't have crust, I can just pour it into a pie pan and freeze it and cook it up later. Well, they're not going to win any awards for beauty, but they are going to be delicious. And these three are going to go into the freezer just like this. And I'm going to flash freeze them and then I'll put them in Ziploc bags. So I have two pies baking in the oven currently. Um, bake them at 375 for 30 to 35 minutes until they're, the top is nice and golden brown and the topping looks nice and flaky. 
Um, obviously in this case I used store-bought uh, pie crusts. I have made my own pie crusts multiple times, but today was just not that day. As you guys can tell, it is now evening. <laughs> I have literally, I mean through the magic of editing and YouTube, this video is what, 20 minutes long? And it looks like it just came together. But I have been working on this all day, you guys. I started cleaning those carrots and celery mid-morning around 10 o'clock. And now here I am at 8 o'clock finally cooking our dinner because you just can't do it all. You know, you, you, it takes time to make things. Um, you get pulled away, you get pulled in a different direction. A baby needs to eat. Uh, you know, my, my toddler needs to be changed. I needed to go pick up my son from school. I needed to go to the store and buy these pie crusts because I knew that I just wasn't going to have the time and since I was across the street picking up my son, I decided just to cross the street, go to the store and pick up some pie crusts to make my life a little bit easier for today. And if I would have made my own pie crusts, we wouldn't be eating until, you know, maybe 9 o'clock. And this is going to be delicious, and we're going to love it. And I have multiple pies here of things that I grew, some things that I didn't. But I've made the best of my situation. I've used what I've grown. I, even though this took me all day long and I felt pulled in multiple different directions and I feel like I haven't accomplished that much today. I have made tonight's dinner and two more nights dinners and I've taken care of my carrot harvest and my celery harvest and most of my potato harvest. So I don't, I'm preserving them in this meal. So I don't have to worry about how I'm gonna keep those from spoiling. I've taken care of them. And those were things that were really eating at me. And bringing in flies, sitting on my counter, or going bad, or you know, whatever. Even though it doesn't look like I've done a lot, I have to remember and give myself grace and remember all the things that it did accomplish. It took care of my harvest of my carrots. It took care of my harvest of my celery. It took care of my harvest of my potatoes. And it has made me multiple dinners. So that is actually a huge accomplishment in the world of growing your own food, right? is using what you grow, using your harvest. And I've just accomplished actually quite a few things and I have to remind myself of that a lot because when you say, what did you do today? And you say, I made five chicken pot pies. That doesn't sound like a lot when you have dishes and laundry and other house cleaning and other errands and all this other kind of stuff. Making five chicken pot pies doesn't really sound like a whole lot. But it really actually was. And I, I have to remind myself of that too because you just, it's easy to not appreciate all the work that goes into these things and it's easy to feel not appreciated when you say when someone says what did you do today and you say I made chicken pot pie and they go that's all you did yeah that's all I did today but look at all that I have accomplished and so even though I started off today very discouraged, and even though I finished the day off only making chicken pot pie, 
I'm hoping to portray to you that I am encouraged. I am feeling satisfied with what I have done today. And we have to remind ourselves sometimes or remind each other. And I'm talking to you, anyone at home doing all the work, and making all the things and caring for all the things and all the people and everything else. I hear you, I see you, I feel you, and know that you're not alone. We're in this together and we are going to do this. And we need to remain positive and see the true value in just making a pot pie. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank you guys for stopping by today and joining in on our journey here at Bourbon's Living. We'll catch you on the next one.